Right now, the newborn phase, but I'm going to specifically speak about the first six weeks after birth. Hey there, I just want to quickly pop on here to remind you that this is part three. Part one and part two are linked down below. That being said, you do not need to watch part one or part two in order to watch today's video, especially not if part one and part two are not relevant to the phase that you're in. I won't be repeating anything in this video that I shared in part one and part two, so therefore I wanted to pop on here quickly. The title is What I Did to Make My Breastfeeding Journey a Success. I do speak about what success means to me, and that's not an assumption that that should be success to other women, I'm not telling other women what they should or shouldn't do or what they should or shouldn't want for their journey. I also have a more extensive disclaimer in part one, so just a short repeat of that for this video. I'm sharing my views, sometimes my opinion, things I did and my experience. I share a lot of the things that I read and what is important to me. But none of that is an assumption that I know what other women should or shouldn't do, or that I think that other women should or shouldn't do the things that I do. Please remember with all my videos, take what serves you and leave what doesn't. And of course, because I'm not a doctor, nothing I say in any of my videos is medical advice. Now that we covered all that, back to the video. I knew from what I'd read that the first six weeks is really important in terms of establishing the relationship with your baby and the supply and demand. So as far as possible, what I read is to not interfere with that and to try to keep it natural between how much your baby has such that your breasts are going to produce what your baby needs. So although part of my breastfeeding journey was no pacifiers or soothers like in general, I knew that it was a really, really big no for me in the first six weeks because that would interfere, is my understanding, with the establishing of supply that we wanted. I also didn't want to pump, but upon the change of milk from colostrum to like the usual milk, it was very clear that I was more on the overproduction than the underproduction side. It was like very engorged, very, very uncomfortable. We did get a manual pump to use to just help with like the extreme discomfort. I wanted to establish the milk supply from natural, just with baby feeding on demand, all of that. So I did keep the pumping to like a bare, bare minimum. I also didn't want to use the haka that I spoke of earlier in the video because it did create a suction. And I did a comparison of using the normal haka that does the suction versus the ladybug, which just catches. And the one that sucks, it is drawing milk out, so it's going to encourage production. I already knew from my preparation before birth how to store milk, so I had the silicone haka bags. I knew what the sort of guidelines were of how long it can be out of the fridge, in the fridge, into the deep freeze. And I gave that information through to Ian. He did all of that, like the sterilizing of the parts and how to store it. This is stuff I do recommend looking into before the time, even like me, if your idea is not to pump, because you really don't want to be focusing on your energy on that postpartum, like looking up like how long can milk stay wherever, whenever. It really helps to just have that information before the time so that you can use your energy on recovery and the experience with your baby. All right, so I had heard in the newborn phase that having nipple pain is quite a common thing, maybe because of latch stuff or also because your nipples are not used to doing this. So I was quite diligent about putting on lanolin after feeds and making sure that I was taking care of my nips in such a way that I wasn't fearing feeds because of pain. And I had honestly minimal pain throughout my breastfeeding journey. That's not to say I've had no pain. There's been discomfort and pain at times, but it's never been for a prolonged period of time and it's never been such that I'm fearing feeds as a result of the pain. The breast pads also helped to keep the lanolin off of my shirts because lanolin is very sticky and I did stain some of my shirts. Also in the six weeks, the six weeks was the first 40 days and we honored that. Like I said, I've linked that video down below, which meant I wasn't really doing much other than recovering and breastfeeding. And Ian being as committed as I was to all of this was doing everything else so that I could purely focus on that. He made sure to support me such that I could continue to feed on demand as Elba required, even through sort of days of cluster feeding or days where I was maybe a little bit tired or anything like that. So he brought me nourishing meals. He made sure that I had loads of beverages to just keep my minerals up. He made sure to take care of the house or anything else such that I could purely focus 
on recovery and baby. Another reason why that's important is because I didn't want to take any medications post birth. I did have some pain after birth and I didn't want to take any pain medication. So having somebody else support me such that I can take like a nice warm bath as my way of dealing with that pain and really just relax and not move around a lot and have like food and things brought to me meant that I wasn't suffering or needing to use medication to get through that such that I can do things. So that was also a way of supporting me in the first six weeks was to help me so that I could avoid needing to take medication to deal with any of the pain or discomfort that I was experiencing. Another supportive thing that he did was, I think it was in the first few days, he bought me the breastfeeding gift. The gift was the breastfeeding pillow that was recommended in our birth course. And honestly, I love it. I didn't know if I wanted to use a breastfeeding pillow before I gave birth, so we didn't purchase one. I wanted to wait and see like what my preferences would be. And I would just like stack pillows and it was fine, but that breastfeeding pillow really made things more convenient and it's, it's really nice. So I'll link it down below. I think it's called the buddy or something. It's a triangular shape as opposed to the round shape, which I found to be better. I have used other people's round ones and I did find yeah. that this triangular shape was much nicer. And then we also used it for things like tummy time. I ended up buying a second one much later in our journey, such that I could have one upstairs and downstairs because I liked using them so much. The second one I bought was secondhand off Facebook Marketplace because they are kind of, I would deem them kind of pricey. So if they're not in your budget for preparing for baby, but you really want one, I think there are a bunch on Facebook Marketplace. I spoke about it a little bit earlier is to not make fear-based decisions or to have my breastfeeding journey be interfered with, so to speak, by people in a position of authority or a so-called expert. So one of the things that I wanna mention in the first six weeks is that I was told to make sure that I'm breastfeeding every two hours for a minimum of 20 minutes. Having read up, I knew that I was rather gonna go on what my baby needed and if she wasn't feeding every two hours, what are the signs that I need to look out for if there's anything to be concerned about? rather than, for example, like waking her up to feed. Mm -hmm. And I'm really grateful that I did that because Elba's pretty efficient at getting milk out. So very rarely did she ever feed for 20 minutes. Like most of her feeds were like eight minutes, 11 minutes, and she seemed very satisfied and was growing and looked healthy from that feed. So I'm grateful that I read up other things to look at and not use like an arbitrary time metric to determine whether or not my baby's getting enough. The biggest one to look out for is obviously input means output. I mention this because people will have different experiences with this and it's very easy to become worried that you are not this exact time frame that somebody's telling you're supposed to be. I went to a mom and baby yoga thing like when I was a few weeks postpartum and there were moms there who would literally be for like 40 minutes straight. And that with Elba was incredibly rare unless she was just feeding for comfort. But if she was feeding for food, she was very efficient at getting that milk out and then getting on to whatever else we're going to do. Then people say six weeks is what it takes for your milk to establish. Again, these are generalizations. They're not always specific to us as a person. So we take it as like a guideline but not a strict thing. I'm pretty sure mine took longer than that to establish. For sure, the experience that I had, like engorgement and that kind of stuff come and go for much longer than just the six week period of time. And also just like the general deflation of them definitely took much longer than six weeks. Okay, six weeks, now it's established. Now I can do whatever I want or I can pump and it won't have an impact or so forth, I think. If I were to do that, it would have impacted my supply. Anyway, so that was the main things that I did for the newborn phase is the biggest one is I honored the first 40 days. So I made sure that the focal point was recovery 
and caring for my infant. My spouse did everything else so that I could focus on that. I focused on nourishing myself, making sure that I was staying well hydrated with loads of mineral type drinks. I also did not do any kind of pacifiers or soothers. I made sure to take care of my nipples. I made sure to look out for what latch stuff there were, as well as to adjust the positioning or do other things to make sure that it was as comfortable as possible for me to breastfeed, given you're doing it many, many times a day. So something like a breastfeeding pillow, if that makes it more convenient for you. I definitely think it is worth getting. Some people don't like to use them, they just use their arms or something else. So I'm not necessarily saying a breastfeeding pillow makes it more convenient for everybody, but it did for me. And then also not making any kind of fear-based decisions and not really looking at specific guidelines from other people to say whether like we're doing it right like in terms of the two hours for 20 minutes type thing but to more look at is my baby looking satisfied is she looking healthy like know what other things to look for to determine whether or not she's getting enough such that I wasn't scared into doing anything that I didn't want to do I also did ask uh, my midwife as well as my doula and Ian to watch when I would breastfeed and to really to give any tips or to share any kind of wisdom. If I didn't have people coming into my physical space, I would have happily done like a video call with be it like a lactation consultant or other friends that have gone through it to ask them like, it, are there any suggestions that you can make to make it look more comfortable or to improve the latch or to do anything. So I was very open for asking for I want to say like assistance and recommendations, but given that I'd done my reading, it wouldn't have been, okay, they said that, therefore I'm going to do that. It would have been adding to knowledge that I already had. One thing I didn't really mention, so I'm just going to talk about it briefly because I know it gets like a lot of attention is tongue ties. This is not a topic that I feel that I'm comfortable to say very informed things on. All that I will say is that I, if this was a concern that I had, I did have resources that I wanted to turn to before having the tongue tie be like snip. That being said, I'm kind of saying that very loosely because we didn't have any issues with regards to a tongue or a lip tie. Okay, now moving on from the newborn phase to the rest of our breastfeeding journey. All right, in the months that followed the newborn phase, uh, the biggest thing on our breastfeeding journey is the fact that I didn't want to use a pacifier or bottles and that I wanted to exclusively breastfeed from the breast. So this is where lots of people might start to give a bottle because they want to go out, they want to go do something else, they want their spouse to be able to put their baby to sleep at night using a pacifier or they want to get more sleep or for whatever reason people might start to use bottles here and or pacifiers. Given that that's not what I wanted, it means that for the last year, me and Elba have always, always been together. I have literally never been anywhere without her and she's never been anywhere without me. For the most part, that has not been a major challenge because I knew this, so I have changed the way that I work. I, I will admit, even though I changed the way that I worked, I was not as clear on what I would or wouldn't be able to do during this time. So I thought that I would still be able to do consultations or facilitate procedures. I'm an employment relations practitioner. And I very early on realized that while I possibly could do it, it was very stressful to do it because if I would hear her when she was with Ian, I would worry, like, should I get there to her? Getting, it's different now that she's getting a little bit older, but I just realized that I couldn't necessarily do those things. So again, I changed the way that I worked and I, I stopped doing that to ensure that I could be with her whenever she wanted to breastfeed or just when she wanted me. There were other times when it was challenging. For example, I haven't done like many appointments or gone places where I needed to be separated from her, but I have been to the oral hygienist twice. I've been to the chiropractor and the osteopath just for like, checkups and all of those times I scheduled my appointments such that somebody was able to go with me so that they could hold Elba so that I could be there if she needed me. For the most part that wasn't an issue in any of those appointments because they're pretty short except for the oral hygienist appointment where I literally had to like stop and then I 
nursed her while sitting on the chair and the oral hygienist is kind of waiting for me to finish so that she can continue. <laughs> but I mean, this is what we wanted for our journey. So uh, there is no resentment or anything from my side in terms of doing that. It's just like a practical hurdle that I've had in terms of booking appointments and also checking with the person who I'm going for an appointment with if they're okay with this disruption. One of the things here is that I did get a lot of comments when I would have challenges with how I would go to an appointment or work that I maybe wanted to do. And then I'd say like, no, you know, I, I can't take on that consultation because of like I'm breastfeeding. Then people will say, but oh, just give her a bottle. Like it's just once off, it doesn't matter. But this is not what I wanted for our breastfeeding journey. And I was willing to make it work or to just not do certain things for a period of time. For me, this is a short part of Elba's life for me to, for example, not do consultations in the way that I've known to do them my entire career. Like that's been one of the main ways that I've worked for my entire career. I saw this as an opportunity to get creative about doing things differently and other things that you know, maybe you can't take your baby with. I just saw it as this is not my season to do those things. For me, breastfeeding is so much more than just giving her food. And I also don't know like why she would want a nurse. Maybe she doesn't want a nurse for food. Maybe it is for comfort or for closeness or for connection. So giving a baby a bottle gives them food, but it's not giving them those other things. And given that she can't use her words to tell me what she wants, I don't know why she would want to nurse or what she's getting from it. And therefore, for me, it wasn't just doing a bottle. It was very important that I maintain exclusively breastfeeding from the breast. Even if that meant stopping doing some stuff that I'm used to doing, or just being like, this is not the season that I do it, or getting really creative about how I do certain things. Maybe when she's older and breastfeeding less, then maybe I'll go back to consultations, but we will see. For now, I just changed the way that I work. Okay, the next thing I also changed is our bedroom. Our bedroom is a safe space for breast sleeping. We have a floor bed, as in the mattress is on the floor and everything in our room is pretty much empty and baby safe. And this is because I nursed throughout the night. So a choice that I made based off of what I read is that I believe that it's important for Elba to feed throughout the night. I don't subscribe that she needs to go the whole night without feeding, be it for food or for comfort. I've read that this is important for them, but I've also read that this is important for the breastfeeding journey because for some people who night wean, it could dip their supply in general because you're going, for example, eight to 12 hours without nursing. For me, I made sure that this was a wonderful and not a torturous experience for either of us. So we do breast sleep, which means that Elba sleeps through and then she has like dream feed. She nurses in her sleep. She lets me know that she wants to nurse either by pulling at my shirt or wriggling. And because we breast sleep, I'm also getting sufficient sleep such that I'm not exhausted and I'm also not finding it difficult to nurse her through the night, which I would if I was having to get up and to go to a different space or go to a different room. I wake up to check on her, I wake up to switch sides, I wake up to lift my shirt. I sleep with one pillow away from her with an adult sleep sack on and a very light breathable blanket. A book that I would recommend on this topic is Safe Infant Sleep, I've linked it down below. That will detail exactly the benefits of breast sleeping for mom and for baby, as well as how to do it safely. I know that the Lalicha League also has a book on that, so I'll link that down below, but I've not read that book. The last thing that I wanna say that I've done to set our breastfeeding journey up for success is to have support and a sense of community and a sense of shared reality. That has become more important the longer we've been breastfeeding because the longer we've been breastfeeding, the more we've encountered that less people are doing it or that more people might have an opinion about us doing it or it might become not so usual or not as supported as it is in the initial stages of breastfeeding. So even though I've had no particular challenges that I wanted to discuss or anything, I do attend the Lelicha League breastfeeding meetings that take place in the area I'm at. I will link their website down below. Pretty sure that they have meetings in most major towns or cities such that moms can connect with other moms who are on a similar journey, have been on the same-ish journey, or just moms who really value breastfeeding and we talk about it and we find support and community there. 
I'm also mm -hmm. friends with other moms who have similar breastfeeding goals. So that's not to say that I pick my friendships to say, well, no, I'm exclusively spending time with people who have similar breastfeeding goals. That's not it at all. But what I do want to say is that finding women to be friends with that have similar goals and a similar view on what they want from their breastfeeding journey is helpful. It's helpful to share tips. It's helpful to just, if I want to share challenges that I'm having around like practical ways of doing things because of the choices that I've made. I like having a community of moms who understand what I'm talking about and who also value that such that the way that they respond to me is going to be one of like either just relating or giving me tips or sharing what their experience has been with that as opposed to saying, well, you know, you can just give her a bottle or give her a pacifier. And I don't mind hearing those comments. I'm just saying it's also important for me on our breastfeeding journey to hear women who relate to the experience that I'm having. And then with breastfeeding in public, I have never used some kind of breastfeeding cloth. It was just like another thing for me to manage and to do. Thankfully, where I live, it is legal to breastfeed anywhere where you are allowed to legally be. So it's not like somebody's going to stop me from doing that. But I am aware that maybe, I don't know, some people might have opinions about that. But that being said, I picked mine and Elba's convenience and what feels better for us over what other people may or may not think of us because I don't like using a cover and she also gets very distracted if there's anything covering her face. I haven't really invested in nursing outfits. I just wear high-waisted tights and then normal bras that I can just pull up. I don't have nursing bras or anything like that. But if I found that I wanted more convenient clothing to nurse in, that's something I definitely would have purchased. It's just, I don't find that my clothing is inconvenient to nurse in. I obviously don't wear anything that I think would be inconvenient to nurse in. Also on the pacifier note, I just want to say I've never even been mildly tempted to give Alba a pacifier. And I think that the biggest things for that were having a husband who supported and was as committed to our breastfeeding journey as I am, as well as having mom friends who viewed it the same or had similar breastfeeding goals. I will link down below a useful article, or at least I think it's useful, from the Lalicha League on the use of pacifiers. Anyway, I probably missed some stuff, but I did do extensive planning and what ifs on like various challenges that we may have faced and what I would have done. But I think the main thing that I did was I, I prepared in terms of resources and I had a committed partner and I have good support. So I'll conclude this video by saying I've had a wonderful breastfeeding journey with Elba, but an overarching experience that I've had is that it's been very meaningful and it's been very beautiful. So yeah, I'll reflect on any challenges or anything else that we had in that. So if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. I hope that this video was interesting and maybe some helpful tips came out of this video and maybe the resources that I've linked down below are helpful for you as well. But I'm just really wishing you a beautiful breastfeeding journey and success in whatever success means to you with your breastfeeding goals and what you want to achieve. And I do really hope that you find community in what and whatever that looks like doesn't have to necessarily be in person for what you want out of your breastfeeding journey. And I think it's okay for us not to want the same things as other people. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying like, this is really important to me. And I'm not saying that anybody's wrong for that not being important to them. But I think there are still maybe a little bit of fears of saying that kind of stuff that it might come across as not supporting somebody else who wants different things. So I just want to say in this video, I covered what was important to me and I covered the reading that I did. And I understand that that's not going to resonate with everybody. So again, please take what serves you and just leave what doesn't serve you and prepare to have the successful journey that you want with your baby. And if we don't achieve that, or if that's not how it turns out, I think it's also okay to just mourn the loss of that and get to be sad that it didn't work out the way that we wanted, pivot, go to our contingency plans, go to our what if plans, be it temporarily or, or permanently. But I don't want us to not want things because there are challenges and sometimes we may be disappointed if things don't work out the way that we want them to. Anyway, that's what I'm gonna end today's video off with. If you liked it, please remember to like it. And if you like my content, please remember to subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching.